Hello and welcome to this edition of Looking Forward with me, Marina Jashi. And with me, Victor Arafeev. Hello, everybody. Well, Victor and I today decided to talk about Mein Kampf, and, uh, or it's translated as My Struggle, uh, the book by Adolf Hitler. And why we decided to talk about it is because uh, the German Institute for Contemporary History decided to republish the book as uh, it was banned uh, for uh, more than 70 years. And in 2015, uh, that regulation that banned the publishing of this book expires. So now there's a lot of controversy uh, sparked by this decision of uh, this institute, whether the book should be republished or not. And this is why we decided to talk about it, as this is, a, uh, in my view, a potentially explosive issue. Again, uh, with anything controversial and explosives, there are opponents and proponents of it. So Victor and I decided to take up this topic and discuss it. Well, Victor, when you learned about this, how did you feel? What was your reaction to this? Well, first of all, Marina, I must tell that I, I read the book. Mm. I read the book because in the Internet uh, we could read this book in Russian. And I read it, and it's a terrible book, of course. It's very nationalist. It is uh, a book of uh, real future leader of the German Nazi party and the organizer of a great world catastrophe. That's why when he talked about his views, about his opinions, he's not just a writer. He's someone who really did a lot of very bad things to the world. Okay, well, it is, it is a manifesto, or as uh, the Nazis say, it's their Bible. Yeah, it's their Bible, and this is a Bible against many uh, nations, including the Russian one, you mm -hmm. know. So everything is already in this book, and uh, this book prepares the party of Hitler to start the war and so on and so on. So this is not a peaceful book. This is a book which arises, uh, I would say, aggression. Okay. I would say hate. And I don't think it, it is a good idea to republish this book. In well, China. you see, uh, there is a debate, there's constant debate when we talk about something controversial. You know, the freedom of speech argument here and how this is going to be received by people. You know, uh, what's your take on this? I mean, this is well, freedom of speech, of course, isn't it? An expression Marina, when you publish something like that. I am for like the fr uh, freedom of speech and mm -hmm. freedom of expression. And I understand that it's very important to publish everything which is fit to be published. Mm -hmm. But when we speak about Hitler, I think we have a, a red line. When we understand, when we cross it, we allow people who really hate nations mm -hmm hate the world system of peace and we give them a possibility to enter the discussion about the future of the world. Sure, but if we look back on what happened in France a while ago, not so long ago, in fact, you know, Charlie Hebdo magazine, and there was the same kind of debate, you know, whether they could publish it, whether it was ethical to publish it. And basically, I mean, we know it that uh, one of the reasons that Charlie Hebdo existed is because they their mission was to provoke. Yes, but this is not mission of Hitler. You know, I was in France two weeks ago and I saw people uh, buying uh, Charlie Hebdo and uh, they sold it, I mean, the editors sold it 7 millions of copies. Yes, more than and expected, more than yes, planned. More, yeah. more than expected, of course, they start to be rich people, the survivors of this tragedy. But I must tell you, it's a completely different thing, that this is political satire, this is, this is something, it's nothing to do with a book which say, you should do that, 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 and that. Uh, Hebdo, but nonetheless, I yeah. mean, a lot of people found uh, their, well, what they call satire offensive and well, provocative. Yes. We because could. when we, we talk about satire, I mean, there are a lot of uh, cartoonists, there are a lot of people, observers. Uh, you know, for, for example, uh, if you look at some of the shows on TV that exist in global media, their satire is witty, is intelligent. But you look at Charlie Hebdo and think, well, you, you start having questions, you know. Yeah, of course. You know, I think that every book could be offensive. It mm -hmm. depends who reads it and how it is. Sure. Every book, even a children's book, you know. And it's necessary to say that cultures from 
some point of view, it's also dangerous because culture shows you new horizons. Sure, yeah. I and, mean, on the one Charlie, hand... And Charlie mm-hmm. Hebdo, it is just a, a small part of the press system of, in France. Mm. And they say we're not very responsible as okay. magazines. Looking forward... But see, the thing is, uh, we live in a different reality now, and it's uh, very important to, for many politicians in Europe especially, because Europe is a very multi-ethnic and multi-religious society right now. It's no longer as homogeneous as it used to be before. So even, you know, when the Charlie Hebdo started, it was a different society back then and now. So I think that politicians have to uh, take on board these issues, uh, that the societies are no longer... Um, sort of homogeneous, they are very multi-ethnic, and some people get offended. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of integrating these minorities and uh, so that they appreciate the culture that they live in. And it also works both ways here. I must mm-hmm. tell you that what does it mean to be offended? You know, if we take Charlie Hebdo uh, enemies who hate it and uh, who say that uh, we are offended, just read their magazines and their newspapers and you'll see that you could be also offended true. if you want. That's true. If you want to be offended. You But know, it's very good to have such a, a, a training how not to be offended by the press. You know, I must tell you, for instance, that in the Tsarist Russia, some Bolshevik newspapers mm-hmm. are, are, are like Pravda also were offended, uh, yeah, offensive. But th- then again, but, we, can, we can use the same argument when we talk about Hitler's book. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that that, uh, not defending that it should be republished. But if we discuss the freedom of speech thing, okay, if some people are offended, it's their business because that was their view, the view of many people in the world in relation to, in reaction to Char- Charlie Hebdo massacre. But here with Mein Kampf, again, it could be another explosive issue in Europe, especially right now because uh, the rise of uh, anti-Semitism is uh, strong. And we see it in France, we see yeah, it in true. other countries, uh, we see the coming to power of uh, far-right parties and uh, nationalist parties, for example, in Greece, the Golden Dawn, and they're interested in that literature. You know, they will be the recipients of that literature. So that is a very worrying and uh, very disturbing signal. And uh, we earlier caught up with Professor Moshe Zimmerman, director of the Richard Hebner Minerva Center for German History at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And here's what he had to say, and here's his reaction uh, to the idea of republishing of Mein Kampf. On the one hand, there is, of course, the interest of the extreme right wing, because they want uh, to publish everything uh, that was created by the Nazis. And against this, they wish they had the law. On the other hand, there is an interest of students, of uh, the common people to know exactly what was the uh, essence of the ideology of uh, Hitler. And this is why they're interested in reading the book. And beyond it, there is the interest of professional historians. They want to publish it with the annotations in order to explain to the public what was wrong about the whole idea of national socialism and what was wrong with uh, other Hitler and so on. Okay, so that was the view of Professor Moshe Zimmerman, director of the Richard Kebner Minerva Center for German History at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Looking forward with Victor Yerefev and Marina Joshi. So as you see, Victor, there's always, when we talk about something controversial, there's two sides. You know, there are opponents of it, there are proponents of it, there are people at, like... At least two sides. At least two sides, yes. Professional historians, uh, lawyers, uh, students who will be interested in this book. So they will be interested in reading it. And another thing is this book will come out with annotations. So um, the original one, if I'm not mistaken, contains 700 pages. So this one will contain a lot more because there will be annotations, there will be some footnotes there, explanations, etc. So, uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, I think that, first of all, I agree with Professor. I think that could be several readings of this book, right? That the far uh, right, extremely... Uh, nationalist uh, parties, they, of course, will be happy to, to have such a book in Germany. But from the other side, of course, we should know, it is our must to know the history of uh, Nazism, because it's quite dangerous, not of, only f- for now, but also for the future. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, that's why I think that uh, historians and students, uh, they should know the book. But it's possible to read it, of course, in the bibliotheques. It's possible to read it. It is already there in the universities. Yes. Well, so if we publish it and then you you could buy in the libraries, it's completely different, you know. That is different. I agree with you. But then again, those who are interested in it professionally, they could go to the library and read it. Library or bibliotheque, I am speaking about mm-hmm. uh, universities. Right? Yes, university library yes. as well. They can yes. go and do it. Yes. So uh, the question here is... If the ban on the republishing of the book expires, why do they want to publish it? I mean, potentially, if it's such an explosive book, uh, given that right now in Europe, perhaps it's not the right time, maybe, with you know all the issues that are confronting us today, and again, the rise of anti-Semitism, won't it spark even more, won't spark even like, more anti-Semitic attitudes? You know, it's really a difficult question. That's why mm. we are talking about that. I think that from one side, of course, uh, the knowledge about Hitler is very important for all of us. And uh, I must tell you, when it's a very boring book, and not because I hate it, mm. but just because it's really, it, it is a book of non-professional writer. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, even when the book is bad, but you want to, to take from it something that could arise your bad feelings, it's already dangerous. See, that's know? the thing. And you know, yes. it was banned in Germany. Uh, it was banned, I think, in many other countries of the world after the World War II. The book first uh, was written, I think, in 1924, came out 25. And after the, the Second World War, uh, the printing and the publishing of this book was banned. But in India and Japan, and it wasn't, and it's very popular there. I mean, for example, Hindu nationalists buy this book and they use it as their manual. In Japan, I'm not sure how it's published. Uh, they say that it's kind of like published in the way Japanese uh, publish their cartoons. So it has that kind of, um, you know, side to it. So there we go. I mean, uh, it wasn't banned in other countries. And in fact, in India, you can find it in a lot of bookstores, even at railway stations. Yeah, well, you know, I think that in India, probably it's possible because India was not involved in in this terrible war in such a way as Russia was or Germany itself. And probably there it is more abstract, uh, this book, when for us this book um, brought the hate to Europe and then we had a terrible war. That's why, you know, uh, Marina, you, I told you from the very beginning that I read the book, so mm-hmm. I was yes. also interested in it because... I think that we should know who was uh, as a leader of the German Nazi party and what he fought. But at the same time, you know, just like that, that just to say the band is finished and now we publish everything is connected to Nazi. I think it's it could be really dangerous. It's not offending, but it's dangerous. I agree. I agree absolutely with you because. What about your opinion? Yeah, I I agree with you totally on uh, this one because, you know, for everything there is a time and reason. And uh, as you said earlier, if there is an interest in something like this, you can always go to the library, you can research, etc. But uh, publishing something like this, especially now, I don't think it's a a very good idea. But uh, then again, there are opponents and proponents and some people, uh, there are lawyers as well, so who say that it's totally legitimate to publish this book. So we'll see. I'm sure there will be a lot of debates uh, in the media about it. And the book is expected uh, to come out in early 2016. If, uh, Which th- if everything goes has? Do you know about that? Well? No, I don't know about that mm-hmm. yet, but I'm sure uh, but we will, will be, learn about will it be, in the press. It is going on selling, right? In, in, in the bookstores. It's going to go to bookstores. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, yeah, if you follow this uh, sort of traditional path when the book is published and yes, republished right. and then it goes to a bookstore. So otherwise, you know, there's, there's no, uh, there is no incentive way. to publish it. Well, we'll wait and see what happens. But again, uh, we both agree that this is a potentially explosive issue. So, Victor, uh, once again, thanks for your uh, thoughts. And Thank you, Marina. I think that uh, it's really a very explosive topic and uh, I like that in our program we could talk about them with such topics. Me too.